On this Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, there is a story connected to his life that has created quite the controversy in the state of Alabama. It's about an underappreciated hero of the civil rights movement and about state officials seeking to punish a city for honoring him. Fred Gray is an attorney in Alabama who, among other things, through his illustrious career, represented Rosa Parks after she was arrested for refusing to give up her seat on a Montgomery, Alabama bus in December of 1955. He represented Martin Luther King Jr. himself in a little known case where King was arrested and tried in 1956 for leading a boycott against the bus company and against all of the buses in the city of Montgomery. Dr. King once called Fred Gray, quote, the chief counsel for the protest movement. Beyond his work fighting segregation, he represented the victims of the Tuskegee syphilis study, among many other cases. And if you look at the cases he's been involved with throughout his life, it is hardly surprising that Gray's hometown would want to honor him. And so the mayor of Montgomery, Alabama, decided to rename a major street where Fred Gray grew up from, get this, Jeff Davis Avenue, named for the president of the Confederacy, to Fred Gray Avenue. And in a ceremony in October, the street was officially renamed. Enter the Attorney General of Alabama, who's now threatening to fine or sue Montgomery for this. The AG, Steve Marshall, says that Montgomery violated a state law called the Alabama Memorial Preservation Act, which prohibits the removal of memorials which have stood for more than 40 years. In 2020, as Confederate symbols were being removed in various cities across the state, Marshall warned local officials to leave them intact. Any elected official who removes a historic monument or statue in violation of Alabama law has broken the law. He has not simply decided to pay a fee so that he can lawfully have the monument or statue removed. He's committed an illegal act. We invited the attorney general to come on the show and through a spokesperson, he declined. Now, I should note that I have a very vested interest here. Since I just announced that I have a new book out this May called Alabama v. King, Martin Luther King Jr. and the criminal trial that launched the civil rights movement, which I am co-authoring with Fred Gray. That's how I really became aware of this controversy. So take it for what you will, but that aside, I find the resistance on the part of the state AG insane. Now look, on this show, you've heard me argue against the removal of statues of Thomas Jefferson or Theodore Roosevelt, but this is different. Streets get renamed all the time for all sorts of different reasons. And seriously, fining the city for changing the name from Jeff Davis Avenue? But the legal question is, does the state have the discretion here to just drop it? Or is the law so crystal clear that the AG has no discretion? Joining me now is Doug Jones, who served as a federal prosecutor in the Northern District of Alabama. He was of course, also a Democratic senator representing the state of Alabama. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. So what do you make of all of this from a legal standpoint? You know, from a legal standpoint, uh, Dan, I, I'm, you know, an old pros a prosecutor has the discretion to do what they want to do and to do the right thing. And Steve Marshall uh, always uses his discretion to do what I consider to be the wrong thing. Uh, and that is to uh, promote this law, to continue to do it, to threaten cities and counties. It's not the first time uh, Birmingham was threatened, Huntsville, uh, any number of cities were threatened. The good thing about this is that if he files this lawsuit, the Alabama Supreme Court has already ruled that it's a one-time fine of $25,000. And people will raise the money to pay that because for enough people in the state of Alabama, not the officials that are in charge right now, there's enough people in the state of Alabama that would gladly, gladly raise the money uh, to have Fred Gray's name on that boulevard instead of the, the president of the Confederate States of America that waged war against the United States. As a legal matter, is there a difference between a street name and a statue? Well, you know, according to our attorney general, and he's the interpreter, and I don't think that this has been uh, challenge just yet in uh, in the courts. Uh, he says there is none. Um, I think that there's uh, obviously something that was resurrected, a monument, a statue, some memorial. Clearly a block of granite is different than a street name that can be changed at the whim of the municipality or the county government off and on. But you got to understand, um, Dan, uh, Alabama is a state that to continues to glorify the Confederacy our state archives had to issue apologies and redo their 
their whole mantra a couple of years ago because it was founded in 1901 to promote white supremacy. There's articles on AL.com by my friend Kyle Whitmire right now detailing the various things in the state capitol and in Eufaula and other places glorifying uh, the Confederacy. We got monuments to fish and, and other and insects, but we can't move a Confederate monument without getting the wrath of the Republican Attorney General in this state. And it's just really, it's just really shameful. All right, I wanna ask you now about a completely different issue. I want you to put on your former Senator hat. Uh, you were viewed as a moderate, almost conservative Democrat, um, because of course you came from the state of Alabama. Um, which is a very red state. If you were currently in the Senate right now, would you be voting to get rid of the filibuster? I'd be voting to reform the filibuster. I'm still not quite a, a, a there on eliminating completely, but I am absolutely in favor of reforming the filibuster and getting the filibuster back to a day like when I worked in the Senate in the late 1970s, when Bob Byrd was the majority leader, Howard Baker was the minority leader. Those are the talking filibusters. I went absolutely in favor but, of putting the burden would you, on. Right, but would ahead. you get rid of the 60 vote requirement though? That's the key. I mean, I understand about the various burdens you can add to the filibuster that used to be there, but would you eliminate the need for 60 votes and just make it a majority vote? No, you flip the vote. You flip the burden and require 41 votes for the obstructionists to come forward. You know, the filibuster was designed in a way to give the minority a voice. And that's the way it would happen if you had a talking filibuster. It's all the way it always happened. But instead of requiring those that want to see the uh, advancement of the legislation, put the burden on the obstructionists right. to get uh, 40 votes there. That, that's what I think that, is the most likely scenario and outcome here. I'm going to try one more time, but you would not support then making it by a simple majority of 51, as that, most Democrats would like to see. That, that, that's an elimination of the filibuster, and I don't think you need to do that, Dan. I really don't believe you need to do that in order to maintain some Because without that, of, without that, the voting rights legislation doesn't get passed. No, I disagree. If they can reform the filibuster, I, uh, the rules, I am absolutely convinced it will take a little bit of time. But I'm absolutely convinced that sooner or later, they will be able to get a vote that would require a majority vote uh, to get the legislation passed. I absolutely believe that. All right. Former Alabama Senator Doug Jones, thank you for coming on the show. Appreciate it. And uh, again, okay. I admitted that I have a, a great vested interest in this. I have just enormous respect and reverence for Fred Gray. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.